Welcome back to Nuclear News from Las Vegas, Nevada. Let's dive into what is going on with the nuclear renaissance and the uranium supply crunch ongoing developing stories. Well, first price action, Sprott Junior Uranium Miners ETF up year to date. Those are the junior miners and the S&P 500 up 6%. So even with all the wobbliness in the stock market, the junior uranium miners are outperforming pretty significant. And it makes sense given the fundamentals we've been covering for weeks. Goldman Sachs starting to realize what's going on. Goldman offers burst of bullish coverage on soaring uranium stock. This is actually very significant for investment capital from institutions and whales. So let's dive through some big developments this week. Brussels, the European Union, big guns, fire up nuclear energy option. Top commission officials praise the technology at a high level event in Brussels on April 11th, ending a policy that had seen the Brussels executives sit on the sidelines. The European Union is striving to reach an economy with net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. At the same time, the need for electricity is expected to skyrocket to achieve this. The commissioners said nuclear was the way to go. And so first, you want to see what the most powerful organizations on the planet are doing. They are diving into this space. Czech government wants to invest 6 billion euros in new nuclear reactors. There's serious, serious money going into this space. And here's just one small example from the Department of Energy. U.S. Department of Energy awards $19.1 million to support students and faculty advancing nuclear energy technology. Funding accelerates R&D and supports workforce development in essential STEM fields within nuclear. U.S. universities and colleges are critical incubators of groundbreaking ideas that can move us toward a clean energy future. These awards invest in the next generation of nuclear scientists and engineers who will continue to advance nuclear energy as a solution to tackling the climate crisis. So again, you want to see what the most powerful governments on the planet are thinking and saying, because the big money investment always follows. Department of Energy study finds replacing coal plants with nuclear plants could bring hundreds more local jobs and millions in added income and revenue to energy communities. The whole energy mix looks set to transform over the next few decades. Obviously, we have India aiming to produce 100 gigawatts of nuclear power. So India aims to produce 100,000 megawatts of nuclear power by 2047, a massive increase from the current production of over 8,000 megawatts. That's very significant. So the future is going to look a whole lot different than it does now by the numbers. The remarkable economic potential of small modular reactors. So $150 billion estimated annual global export potential of small modular reactors in Canada, $2.5 billion estimated impact of small modular reactors on the Canadian GDP, $5.3 billion estimated domestic market value between 2025 and 2040, and then 2,600 jobs approximately created. And so the small modular reactor industry didn't really exist like two years ago. So it's brand new, adding significant demand for nuclear fuel and uranium. So while we see this huge growth in demand projected out for nuclear power and uranium, where is it all going to come from? We've been covering week after week how scarce the supply is, and currently there's practically none available to power all of this. And so we're going to rely on mines to come online. Well, here's just one example of how long it takes for mines to come into production to actually produce enough. And field applies to restart Shooter Ring Canyon Mill. Anfield Energy has submitted its production reactivation plan. The company said it's targeting the mill restart for 2026. It's been on standby since 1982. So these mines clearly can't just be sprung up overnight. That's the exciting investment potential here. We're in a supply-demand crunch. There's not enough available currently. We see demand accelerating. And the mines clearly are going to take at least two years to even get up and running. And so that is probably why these mines are increasing in value and why Goldman Sachs is starting to realize it.